Hey everybody, it's Amy Astro here and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be all about drizzle. I had a question recently based on another video that asked me about the drizzling process and I realized it was probably a little bit confusing and I should walk through that step just a little bit slower because drizzle does not happen with drizzle integration. You really have to back up a couple steps to uh, get it all, everything all lined up to start. So let's talk about drizzle and I'm not talking about rain. Well folks, let's get started here. What I did is I went back in my archives at some old images that I had processed that might show us some good drizzle to um, so we know what we're trying to get rid of. These photos were taken back in 2019, no 2018 when I was just starting. They were taken with the Explorer Scientific Telescope 102 and with the ZWO 071 um, color cool camera. Now, I no longer own that camera. It and I did not quite get along, so we parted ways, you know, as best I knew how to. And um, anyways, I've resurrected some images of the pinwheel. Now, if you follow one of my other videos where I show about how I like to structure my folders, I like to structure them so I tell you every step that I've accomplished in the folder. So all images in this folder have are the light images. They've been calibrated, they've been cosmetically corrected, they've been debared, and they have been approved. And approve is going through the subframe selector process. And when I went through this process here, you'll notice I have images from multiple nights here. So it gets a little confusing to keep up with which one was the best image overall. But I ended up selecting this first image as being my best one based on um, some weights and eccentricity values. And I put a little tilde in the front of it so I can find it easy later, okay? But what we want to do is talk about drizzle. Now, when we drizzle, we don't start with drizzle integration. We actually have to back up a couple steps and we start with star alignment. So that is going to be my next step here, which is registration. So I'm going to come over here to star alignment. And I need to choose a reference image. And my reference image is going to be that one that had that little tilde in the front. I'm going to say open. A lot of times I just choose the first image um, and I don't really worry about it a whole lot. But dealing with multi-nights, it was a little bit more confusing, so I like to identify it. All right, now, drizzling actually takes place right here. We have to generate our drizzle data before we can actually do our drizzle. So I'm going to add my files. I'm going to say open. How many images do I have here? I have 38 images. Hopefully that'll show us something really good. Let's see, output the images. I'm gonna put them in this directory that ends with registration at the end. And they'll all have a postfix of an underbar R. Star detection. Now what I tend to do is take this log sensitivity and I drop it all the way down to minus three to give it some extra help for the stars that aren't quite perfect to align. And then, I'm going to minimize these guys up so you can see them. We're going to go under star matching and I'm going to take the ransack tolerance and bump it all the way up to eight. And that will just help me. It just really helps the stars connect and align, especially when you're dealing with a bunch of them. And all I'm going to do now is hit apply global. When I do that, I'm going to bring over, here we go, so you can see it, see they're all running through over there. 
let's open up our registration folder and let's watch them drop in. Now with any luck, I won't have any red lines pop up over here because that red line tells me that something has not aligned. Here we go. Now they are starting to pop in. Now I want you to notice we have the XISF, which is our main image, and then we have the XDRZ, which is our drizzled data. And the next couple steps that we do, we're going to drop them all in the same folder under registration, and they're going to start overwriting each other with the more current information. All right, so 38 images succeeded, none failed. That's quite good. I am happy with that. Let's see if we can get this going here. All right, here is everything. I've got my basic image and I've got my Driz image. Okay, now I'm going to take a moment here and I'm going to write down the timestamp on this first one. Okay, at 2.43 p.m., let's go on to the next step after we have aligned everything. Now we want to do our local normalization. I'm going to go grab that file, and I'm going to grab that one with the tilde here, but it has to be from this registration folder. I'm going to show you which what files drop in here. And because we're doing no local normalization, it already filtered out all of the Driz files because it doesn't care to see them. Okay, it's only looking for our XISF. And I think it's time for a new battery in my mouse here. There we go. So no Driz files are there, but they've just been filtered out. So I'm going to grab this first one, which was my best image. And we're going to come back here, generate, generate normalization data. And I don't care to see my rejection maps or anything. I'm going to add files. And they're all from this registration folder. Let's, let's grab all of them. My output directory is going to be the exact same directory. And it's going to overwrite things. And that's what I want it to do. And I'm going to say apply. And this is going to create my normalization, which is like XN. Let's see. Let's get it back up on the screen here. All right, we should see a bunch of files start to pop in here in just a second. All right, so our normalization files have been created. All 38 succeeded, zero failed. And that process could, took about three and a half minutes. But let's look at our directory. So now you'll see we have XNML files, which is our normalization files, along with our drizzle and our regular. But what I want to look at is the timestamp. Okay, I said 243. And these are still 243, my two mage ones, and my uh, normalization one is 249. All right, so now that we have normalized everything, it is time for us actually to integrate this into a single image. Now, we haven't officially done our drizzle yet, but we're, we're getting there. These are the few steps that we have to accomplish before we can do that. So I'm going to grab all of my images, and notice it filtered out only to the XISF files. And then we're going to add our normalization files, which are now the XNML files. And we're going to add our drizzle files, which is our drizzle data files, okay? And our drizzle data is we're all about 243. In the afternoon, we'll say open. Okay, so each file now has a normalized and a drizzle file associated with it. Okay, now my, I'm going to use normalization, local normalization. Noise evaluation is going to be my FITS keyword, 
and that was S S W E I G H T S S weight. Okay, I'm going to generate an integrated image. I'm also going to generate drizzle data, which is going to be drizzle data that overwrites the current drizzle data. Okay, we're going to evaluate our noise. Let's go to pixel rejection one. Since we have a whole bunch greater than 20, I'm going to use linear fit clipping. And we will do local normalization. And I'm going to go ahead and generate rejection maps just so you guys can see them. And let's see, I'm just going to do the high and the low. I'll leave those alone and I'll leave those alone. Let's go ahead and process. And there's an error. Okay, this error is invalid keyword SS weight. So apparently when I went through the approval process with subframe selector, I must not have hit return somewhere and I didn't get this keyword attached. But that's okay, this video is not about subframe selector. And these were processed in 2018, a long time ago. So let's get around this. Let's do weights. Uh, let's try average value and see what it does. And that could be wrong. I'm not real sure because I usually step backwards until I can get the SS weight in. But let's see how this one does. Tell me what you guys use in the comments below if you don't mind. All right, so here we go. I saw a whole bunch of warnings fly through. Let's just take a look at them. Okay, they've been updated. Inconsistent observation, name, observer. Well, yes, it was done on multiple nights and I probably didn't fill all that information out. Anything else? Nope, that looks like it. All right, what does a slope image look like? Now these are one of the rejection files. Okay, so it's definitely not pretty. You can see how everything lined up for multiple nights. They're slightly off kilter. And that is what it's getting rid of. Whatever it is, it looks gnarly. Let's get rid of it. Now my rejection high. All right, so the high rejection looks like it's my planes. And maybe some dithering going on or UFOs, I'm not real sure, but definitely looks like it needs to go away. Let's close it and let's see what our rejection low looks like. All right, some more, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks bad, so let's get rid of it. Now, for the image itself, yikes, that turkey is red. But really, it doesn't look bad for data that's several years old. So, the question is, is what about drizzle? Well, now we're going to do our drizzle process. And we're going to go over here to drizzle integration. And let's get our directory up again. We are going to grab these files here. And I want you to notice this first one up here, this drizzle file. is now updated instead of being 243 it's now 256 because our last step just overwrote it with fresh information so now with that fresh information we're going to add our files and it's going to only grab the drizzled files and open and let's see enable pixel rejection enable image weighting surface blinds, distortion, I just leave all that pretty much where it is and let's run it. Now there have been times on an older computer that this was a 10 minute affair to make happen. This computer is a bit quicker but it's always a good time to uh, get a coffee break about now. Alright so it looks like it's done. Let's see how long that took. That took 3 minutes and 11 seconds Okay, we know that yes, we have a lot of inconsistencies due to multiple nights and information that I provided. Let's minimize up our drizzle 
and let's see what we've got here. This is what it got rid of. Let's see if we can see anything. There we go. That is the leftover yuck that was in our image. You can see where the planes were going through. This is some haloing and things and just some dirt that was hanging around in our image. So this is what drizzling does. It removes any leftover haloing and impurities on your image that just don't belong. As you can see, that was, that was quite a bit of stuff that it got rid of, which is a good thing. It just gives you a cleaner image in the end. But let's see how clean it is. Let's give this guy a stretch. I'm still a very red, all right. I'm gonna zoom in on him. That's our original one, pre-drizzle. And let's zoom in on this post-drizzle one. Well, I guess since it removed some green, it uh, gave us a nice ruby red here. Okay, and this is the image here. And what you're going to see here is just a general smoothness going on that we didn't have before. Let's see, there we go. Let's zoom in on that. Just, it looks about the same size. Now this one is smoother, not as pixelated as the original one. So I just want you to see the difference of what we just accomplished by taking the time to do the drizzle step. Let's see if I can get that. But look at those two stars right here. It's rounder. There is more pixelating, more square. Even when I bring this in, whoops, doesn't take much to move it now. It's just a nicer looking star. So really that's why we do it, just smooth things out. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my original image because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna continue to run with the new and improved drizzle image. Well guy, that's it. That's the mystery of the drizzle. And I use the same directory over and over again and let them overwrite each other just so I don't have so many extra files on my computer. That's it. That's the main reason I use just one directory. So I hope this clears things up for you. Please continue to send me those questions. I will do my best to make a little video for you and just explain things further. Because just because it's easy for me, it's only because I have been doing this for a very long time. And trust me, it takes time to learn this. Lots and lots of cheat notes. In fact, I still have a book here of cheat notes that I made back in 2017. And it is still my Bible today that I used. And I got it off of somebody else. So... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm pretty sure this is going to be my last video of this year. So I can actually say I will see you all next year. And I hope you have a wonderful, happy new year, some great health, clear skies, and I'll see y'all real soon. Love y'all.